There's so many different myths that people have about cancer, about a lot of different things related to health, but about cancer in particular. But there's a lot that we do know about cancer and a lot of things that we can share with people about how they can reduce the risk of cancer. We know a lot of how people can reduce the risk of cancer. First and foremost, don't smoke. That is the leading cause of, of preventable cancer deaths. And for the majority of people who don't smoke in this country, the most important things they can do to reduce the risk of cancer are to eat right and be more active. Um, we also know certainly staying out of the sun, uh, using sunscreen, putting on a hat, you know, long sleeve clothes during those, those uh, peak sun hours are important. And so there's a lot of things people can do to reduce their risk, but the bottom line, is you can do all the quote unquote right things and unfortunately still get cancer, but for many different types of cancer, there are these prevention factors. I love talking about superfoods because everybody thinks that there's you know a food or a food group in particular that can you know solve all your cancer problems and reduce your cancer risk. And the evidence just isn't there on that. What we see from an evidence perspective is that it really is that overall dietary pattern that makes a difference. Now, I say that, but there certainly are foods that I think of as superfoods that are really, really healthy and really packed with nutrients. And we should be eating a lot of those types of foods, colorful fruits and vegetables, whole grains, healthy, protein sources, salmon, fish, beans, tofu. So a lot of those foods in my mind are superfoods, if you will, and we should be eating those, but not with the idea that any one of those is going to reduce our risk of cancer. One thing I hear all the time is sugar feeds cancer cells. And the bottom line is sugar feeds all of our cells, including cancer cells as well. So there's nothing really specific about sugar directly causing cancer or, or if you have cancer, sugar causing those cancer cells to grow more or faster. But the issue is we eat a lot of sugar in this country. And a lot of that sugar is contributing to the overweight obesity epidemic that we're seeing today, which does impact cancer risk. There's been a lot of research done looking at green tea and coffee, for example, and do these have an impact on cancer risk? Um, I would say the jury's still out on those things. However, uh, you know, the, the issue with tea, green tea in particular, packed with antioxidants, um, and we know that the antioxidants in fruits and vegetables are protective against cancer. What we don't really know yet is, are those antioxidants in tea protective against cancer? And same thing with coffee. There've been some interesting studies lately looking at coffee and cancer risk, and the jury's still out we don't know. I encourage people, if you, if you like to drink coffee, drink coffee, that's fine. Watch sweeteners that you're adding to your tea or your coffee, because uh, those calories can add up. But yeah, from a cancer perspective, we just don't have the evidence to say, you know, drink coffee, drink green tea, it's going to reduce your cancer risk.